Welcome to this final press conference as we get set for a great night of World Championship Boxing this Saturday, October 12th at the First Direct Arena right here in Leeds. It is all being brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Foot Asylum. Tickets can be purchased through Ticketmaster or at the First Direct Arena box office. And if you can't join us at the arena, you can watch it live on BT Sport and in the United States on ESPN+. Well, at this time, I'm going to introduce to you our panel, beginning with two gentlemen who will be competing in a 12-round contest this Saturday, and it will be for the vacant Commonwealth Light Heavyweight Championship. First, he comes to us from Accra, Ghana. He brings a record of 14 wins, two defeats, one draw, 12 wins by knockout. Let's welcome Emmanuel Horsepower Ani. And his opponent this Saturday night from Mostyn, undefeated with 15 wins, 12 come by way of knockout. Let's welcome Lyndon King Arthur. Our next two competing this Saturday in a 12 round contest. It will be for the Commonwealth Super Featherweight Championship. First, he comes to us from Campus Lang, Scotland. He brings a record of 18 wins, six defeats, one draw, four wins by knockout. Let's welcome the challenger, Jordan, Jordy McCory. And the defending champion from Manchester, 22 wins, just one defeat, 13 wins by knockout. Let's welcome the Commonwealth champion, Zelfa Brown Flash Perry. And we welcome on the panel, Sean O'Hagan, the trainer and father of Josh Warrington, and also Hall of Fame promoter, Frank Warren. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our main event this Saturday night at the First Direct Arena is scheduled for 12 rounds, and it will be for the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. Let's welcome from Arden, France. He brings a professional record of 35 wins, three defeats, one draw, 13 wins by knockout. He is the former European and IBF International Featherweight Champion. Let's welcome Sofiane Babyface Takouche. And now we welcome the defending world champion. This will be his third world title defense. He is undefeated with 29 wins. Six come by way of knockout from right here, Leeds, England. Here is Josh, the Leeds Warrior, Warrington. And I now hand things over to the host of today's press conference, Mr. John Rowling. Thank you, Thomas, and uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today and coming and uh, sharing in uh, the preamble to what we're sure is going to be another terrific night at the First Direct Arena. It's going to be, the, I think I'm right in saying, the tenth time that Josh has fought there. And it's going to be a, a very special night, I'm sure, always one of the great atmospheres in boxing when uh, Josh takes to the ring here in Leeds. You really know how to get behind it, and it makes it a very special occasion. Promoter, of course, is, is Frank, and uh, it's great to be back here again with Josh heading the, heading the bill. It certainly is. You know, uh, for me, one of the most exciting fighters in the world, the best in his division. And uh, he's fighting in front of his home fans again at the arena. And uh, I think we're going to get a cracking fight again. He's got to be at the top of his game. He's got to really work hard, come through this, and I hope he comes through it. And then we can look at the unification and try to get back at Leeds United, back to Ellen Road again. But this 
We don't want it to be a banana skin. It's got to be 100% of this one. Well, that's always the uh, the possibility with boxing, isn't it? You don't take, you can't take anything for granted. Well, you look over the last uh, six, seven months, you've had a situation where uh, Anthony Joshua and Ruiz going into that fight. Anthony Joshua was a massive favourite. We all know what happened. Um, even Tyson Fury against um, Wally a couple of weeks ago. You know, he was one. Well, you know, just moments away from a referee may have stopping it because of the bad cut of the game. His superior boxing skills got him through, but that cut nearly upset his uh, rematch. And then uh, even this last weekend, you look at Golovkin and Derashev, Derashev, I can't pronounce his name properly, but you look at that fight, there was nothing in that. I thought that the other guy actually might have just edged it. So he's got to be, which I know he will be, Josh, 100% top of his game and cannot afford to take his after ball. And I don't know he's dead. Sure, mine and Lambs have done that anyway, but he's got to be 100%. We'll talk in more detail about the main event in a moment or two, but uh, as you've heard, we've got the principal undercard fights represented up here as well. And uh, it's good to see a, a strong undercard, not only a good world title fight here, a genuine world title fight, but also a couple of decent uh, undercard fights and indeed a strong bill all, all the way down the list. It is, it's a cracking card. Well, I mean, I think we've uh, we've delivered to the fans over the last few years with our strong undercards, and again, we're doing the same thing here on Saturday. The, the, the guys are here, um, all sitting at the table. I'm sure they're going to have give their their views on where they're going, where they, where they're going with the fight. But you know, Lyndon is uh, he's tapping on the door now. Again, in this country, the light heavyweight division is a very lively division, and I'm sure he'll be looking to make. His mark in that, and uh, Pat Barrett's done a fantastic job with him bringing him through. And then you've got a great fight between Zelfa and you've got old Jordan here. He's never, I mean, I love him on our shows. He's never is a dog fight. He's a competitor. I've never seen a guy give so much as he does. So you know that's he's going to be coming and giving his usual 150%. So we've got, you know, these just those two fights are really good quality fights. Well, let's just uh, welcome before we hear from Lyndon. Emmanuel Ali over here fighting for the first time in the UK, yeah? Yes. And uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this one? It's a uh, Commonwealth title fight, vacant light heavyweight title fight, and a great opportunity for you. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for me because I've been waiting for this for a very long time. And this is a great opportunity for me to take this title. I know uh, Le Donata is not a I would say not a, he's a great boxer to me, but he haven't fought somebody like me before in his life. So we are going to see what will happen. I think I'm going to take the title for him. You say he's, he's an average boxer, what do you mean by that? Yeah, a great boxer means um, having fight any credible fighter, a boxer before in his career. And um, I've been in two countries, and the results coming out of where I went wasn't bad. And I think if I compare myself to him, I think I'm better than him. So what do you regard as your principal strengths as a fighter? What's, uh, what's Lyndon got to look forward to? OK, I can't beat it now, but I think the ring will decide. Sorry, say that again, please. I can't predict what will happen. Like, even though if um, he puts the ball, then I think it's going to be um, a punishment for him. But <laughs> if um, he give up, then I think he's free. Well, let's uh, hear from Lyndon. He, he's ready for you. Yes, he sounds. He sounds confident, which I'm glad. I'm glad. I don't want to walk over opponent and. He seems like he's come for the win, and, but there's no way on earth that he, in any department, is better than me. So I don't know where he's got that information. Again. I, have no, I have no idea. Have you had a chance to see him at all? I've seen a couple of his fights. I've watched, I don't really like to watch my opponents too much, but obviously, being my first title fight and whatnot, I've, I've looked a little bit on, on, on Emmanuel and him, and, 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 and I've studied him a little bit. Frank alluded to it when we were doing the introductions first up. You know, I mean, your division at the moment, there's some real talent in the uh, in the UK. Anthony Yard, obviously, but other good guys below that, people like Boatsy, and you're right up there as one of the people 
with a great opportunity on Saturday night to make a statement. Yeah, of course. I mean, when I won this um, this Commonwealth title, I'm right, I'm right behind them guys, and and you know, I'm sure them fights will be made, be great fights in the future. But right now, we focus on Emmanuel and them, get him out of there. Tell us about uh, working with Pat, who's <laughs> sort of a, a, bit of a, a bit of a legend up in Manchester. Tell us about him as a trainer and how it all works out. Yeah, you know, it's it's a, I guess the same as every other trainer is militant and, and a perfectionist. So we're, we're in the gym 24 seven and we're constantly working, we're constantly perfecting our craft, and you know he's got me to where I am now, and, and he will take me all the way, I believe. So we, we're working, working greatly. And of course, uh, a training partner of, of Zelfa. Yeah, how, yeah. how, how do you how do you get on together? Yeah, me and Zelfa are family. I mean, we might get each other's necks 24 <coughs> seven, but we 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 are family. And we push each other to the limit all the time, so it's it's great for me. And uh, so many terrific fighters from Manchester over the years. You've been a pro now for what three three years or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, just past three years. And uh, a chance to follow some pretty big names. Yeah, it is. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of great fighters from from the country itself. So I'm just trying to make my legacy in, in in that as well. Who do you who do you look up to? Who do you see as as role models apart from the man down here, Pat Barrett? Um, who do you see as who do you? In boxing. Yeah. Just all the greats, all the greats. Muhammad Ali, Zelfa. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, Roy Jones. You know, just all the all the all the great classic boxer fighters that you know that have been great over the years. He says he's ready for you. Have you got any message, maybe I, just to I pass hope, to him? I, I hope he is. I hope he is because he says there's no one else for. There's no. He's not fought anybody at all. No, like no. There's no one he's fought that I would not have knocked out. That like, he's gone the rounds with. There's nobody. So I don't. I don't. Again, I don't get where he's got the information from. But I'm. I'm you know, I'm happy to listen to. Him. Manuel, anything to say? Yeah, I heard him what he was saying, but um, he think I'm nobody. But I don't think you're nobody. I'm saying you've never fought nobody like me. Yeah, I never you've fought never nobody. Ever That's what like you are saying. You said I've never fought nobody, but um, the person you are fighting. And I went to me. Russia. They you just got me. I went I got there beat. tomorrow. You got beat. I'm fighting. Beat. That's what happened. That's you why I lost when I went to Russia. Yeah, you got beat. He said I'm nobody, but I'm going to show you I'm somebody. And see, so yeah. you, got beat. you don't know me, that's why you are talking like that. Me, you if you know me beat. well, like you would say what you are saying. Uh, if you want to know more about me, you can ask Joshua, Obuasi, and Leron Richard. Obuasi, so Lawrence, you know me very well. And I fought them in amateur before in Ghana. That's amateur. That's amateur. Yeah. It's a different world. Okay. Okay, you can say whatever you want to say. But I know we will meet Saturday to approve what I have for you. We will see. That's the Commonwealth Lights Heavyweight <coughs> fight for the vacant title on Saturday. Lyndon from Manchester against the man here, Emmanuel from, uh, from Accra. And uh, certainly they've talked a good fight. We wait to see what's produced in the ring. Now, alongside them, we have uh, defending his Commonwealth Super Featherweight title, Zelfa Barrett against Jordi Macari, who, as, as Frank said, never seems to have a dull fight. It's got the makings, this one, Frank. Oh, it's a cracker, isn't it? You know, it was, uh, you know it's going to be a good fight. There's, they're both skillful boxers, they're both competitors, and we're going to see something, I think, a little bit special in Saturday. Jordy went in at uh, late notice against Sam Bowen and uh, got stopped eventually in nine rounds, but I think Sam, if he was sitting here now, would admit that he, he gave him a he gave him a hard fight, didn't he? He certainly did. There's no doubt about that. And uh, you know, he you say he came in last moment. He's had time to prepare for this fight. And went the distance with Archie Sharp, who, as we all know, is starting to make real waves in this division. Jordy coming into this, uh, wanting to wanting to get a W after two brave performances, but you, I guess, want to show that you're more than that. Yeah, definitely. Like, I put everything into this camp. Everything's went well. I'm feeling good. Weight's good. Everything's going right for me. So, I'm going out there to get a win. You've obviously seen him. Seen him box. He's a he's a slick technician. <coughs> yeah, I, I respect him. He's, he's a good boxer. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get into the top ten in Britain and stuff like that if you're not like a good boxer. So and then obviously he's won against Leon Woodstock. He boxed very well and stuff like that. But I think I can definitely cause him problems, not I mean if I stick to the game plan for sure. 
He's won defeat against Ronnie Clark, another Scotsman. Um, I, I guess you'll have watched that one pretty closely. Yeah, my, well, my coaches watched it definitely, and there's a bit of a blueprint to how you beat him a wee bit there, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Ronnie's a good boy, definitely, and he uh, showed a lot of flaws in his defence and uh, in him as a boxer. I'm sure Zelfa would say that he's learned from that and come on from that. Aye, definitely. You can see when he fought Woodstock, it, obviously he's learned a lot. He's he's went back to the gym and worked harder. So, and that's the exact same as me when I fought Bowen and uh, Sharp. I got beat. I was back to the gym, worked harder. Like for me, this this could possibly be my last chance. So I'm giving everything I've got to. Are you? mentally saying this has got to be the one this has got to be the well, one I've through for me i put everything into this camp i've been away sparns and just everything's gone right i'm in the right mindset everything's went well this camp i'm feeling 100 percent and as uh, frank that said i'm i'll be there giving 150 uh, percent saturday night zelfa you've heard that you listen to it you know what he's about. I mean, they don't come any more game than this man. Yeah, well, no, um, we, we already expected what he was going to do. Um, I already know he's going to throw the kitchen sink at me. He's going to give 150 percent. That's this is the reason why we wanted this fight. You know, he's going to bring the best out of me. I'm glad they watched the Clark fight, but that ain't me. So, and, they, and whatever they think they can do, you know, I'm excited because I believe in myself. And you know, I'm no sharp and I'm no sambowin. I'm not a and I respect him too, and he's got a good little team around him, but I believe I'm the best in my weight division, and they'll see. The better he comes, the harder he comes, the little game plans if he can do, I'll execute differently. How do you think the Zelfa Barrett of now compares with the guy who lost to Ronnie Clark? What, what have you actually taken from that defeat and added? Um, prepared well. Mindset's great. Um, you know. The, 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 there was two different different fighters against Clark and Bullsock. Looked different, you know what I mean. So it is what it was. It's made me a better person. But you know, I'm excited for Saturday. That's just turned me on. Him saying he's gonna come, hundred percent and whatever. Give, give everything, give everything up. Cool. I want it. And remember, Ronnie Clark didn't want the rematch. He had a contract with it and whatever. It never happened. Mm. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a terrific division, isn't it? You've already mentioned Leon Woodstock, he never has a dull fight. You've mentioned Sam Bowen, who's there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Archie. I mean, there's some real talent within Britain at that level. Yeah, of course. Um, there's some good fighters, great fighters in that weight division. But for order for me to get where I need to be, next to my older brother, I it, um, I need to be do this this but this man and these kind of people and you know I believe I'm I'm a good fire, I believe I can be a world level so you know it is what it is. So I think we're win. Are you are you under pressure, do you believe, to really look good on Saturday night, to get yourself lined up for these big fights in the future? Talk about Sam Bowen, assuming that he's <laughs> still there undefeated when you're ready to fight him. Um, that's presumably one that you'd really look at. Of course, you know, um, but I'm not overlooking Jordan, you know, I know he's a good fighter, I know he's going to come bring it, but I'll just be me, I'll just turn up Saturday and do what I've got to do. Whatever the outcome, I will win, so there's no pressure, you know, there's pressures in life, waking up every day, so, you know, nothing. He's a good fighter and I respect him. Respect from him, respect from you? I definitely, I said that he's a good boxer and stuff like that, but like if I want to obviously get the W then, I need to show what I'm all about salt then that's what I'm going to do. So people who are looking for the little upset, as people do, you'd say look at you. Aye, definitely, I'm an upset, aye. Good fight, another one, and uh, we look forward to that. That's two cracking uh, undercard fights, and uh, our main event now, Josh against Sofian. And uh, Josh has uh, got that sort of special man of the people feel when you come up here, hasn't he, Frank? Well, he is. He hasn't lost his roots, that's for sure. And every time we, you know, we we come back here, um, you know, I know how thrilled he is to box in front of his home fans. Um, it's always a pleasure. You know, between all of us, we've built a great situation up here, haven't we? You know, with the with the, the resurgence of boxing in Leeds, and we're going to continue to move forward. With that and the name of the game is now. Hopefully there's no banana skin here if he comes through, which I'm, I'm, I have every confidence he will because I think he's the, the best out there. I think he's the best in the division, in the division, out of all the champions. 
Um, you come through this and we, we're looking to get to Ellen Road again, as I said earlier. This is what it's all about. But he's got to focus on this, as I know he will do, and, uh, and he's fighting the highest available contender in the IBF. They didn't rank, rank number one and two, and this guy's the next one then. Well, Josh, you've got uh, your friends, fans here right now, here in Leeds, and many more, I'm sure, watching online. Tell us, uh, tell us how you're feeling as you're coming up now towards its uh, third defence of your title. I'm feeling as, uh, as well as I look, as well as I've dressed. I'll tell you what, the shirt's a bit rascal, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think? Is it yeah or nay? Yeah. What are we saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah go on. Get a word of it. Get a word of it. Um, Don't challenge Says you win your shell suit. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm, uh, <coughs> it's been another good camp, um, and it's easy to say that constantly, you know, building up to the fight. Easy to speak in front of media and say, yeah, everything's gone to plan, but um, certainly the build-up of the last fight, I think that um, we took our eye off a few things because we were so concentrated on unification fights after Gallard, just beating Gallard up anyway, putting up with his nonsense, and and I think he took our half the ball in, in a, certain, a few few certain areas of training this time round. All I've done is focus on to coach and to coach only, and not looked beyond that. Yeah, with the talks about fights, what could potentially happen. You know, there's talks about going back to Ellen Road. There's talks about unification fights, but. This time round, all the focus has been on this fight and this fight only. And I've not been looking past this one. And um, uh, and camp as well. Camp's been really, really good. Um, there's been a good vibe. I mean, you know, my training team's amongst here, scattered about, and um, they're like away everything I'm saying. You know, there's been a very, very good vibe to, to training. And uh, what, four days away now? Three days away? And I get to showcase. You know, what we're really about and um, certainly after you know the, the last fight I want to come back with a A class performance. You know, Selby, Frampton, fights of the years and um, you know the the last one cuddling contest but you know we we're going to we're going to this next one to try to deliver what we, we know we're capable of doing and that's a, as an A class performance. Sean, um, after the after the last fight which I suppose you, you've got to look at as uh, a, a best frustrating. How difficult was it to lift Josh up again and say, right, that's happened, move on, go again? I think it was uh, just echoing what Josh said there. I think what we did, we became a little bit too familiar. Back at Arena, another fight, maybe it took his eye off ball a little bit. Um, but this, that, that last fight, I think, even though he's world champion, it was a good learning fight. And what we've done this time is we've prepared in case that ever happens again. Um, we've left no stone unturned. We've got to come back and make a statement. I mean, I believe he's the best featherweight on the planet. Uh, he carried us all as a year. You know, all your other featherweights, three other world champions, send this fight down. Sophie Allen took this fight in a breath. There were no will think about it, there was, there was no negativity, he jumped at the opportunity to become a world champion. But he's got to come and he's got to rip that away. He's got to come and he's got to rip it away and I think he's, you know, that's what he's about. I've seen a little bit of him, there's a lot of things that have gone missing off um, social media, but I do know about him. We've had a look at him, we've studied him, he's a very, very good fighter. And so anybody who says he's an easy fight, it's completely the opposite to an easy fight. He's got a good knockout percentage, 35 fights, two of his three losses have been dubious and he's on a six fight unbeaten run. That tells me he's not a bad fighter. We've had to prepare for everything that he's going to bring to the table and that's what we've done. So Saturday night we're looking to make a statement to prove that we are the best featherweight on planet. He's a southpaw guys, how much of a problem is that? Like I say, we've learned a lot from that last fight. Um, I think a big issue in that last fight is with all the bad mouthing and the bad talk between Josh and Barry Gallard, I think what happened was we took his eye off the job in hand and he just wanted to beat him up so badly 
chainsaw out. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, you know, the last fight, he won the last fight. He didn't get beat, he won the last That's fight. It, yeah. And it takes two to make a fight. And his tactics were to come and nick it, not to win it, not to come in there and, you know, stand and have a, you know, have a fight. He, he was trying to nick it. And the referee, I don't think, got it right. He, took, he, he should have took dot points, it would have been a different fight. But he won it. And that's what champions do. They win, they keep winning, they keep winning. And that's what he did against the guy, you know, we didn't want the fight, let's get it right. No one wanted it. We all knew it was going to be a pain in, a pain in the arse defence and we got stuck with it. So that's what it was. He won the fight, done what he had to do. He is the best featherweight on the planet, there's no doubt about it. And if he was so bad last time out, then why, don't, why didn't Santa Cruz or Valdez want to fight him? They were offered big money to fight him. That's all you need to look at. And we're here now fighting the, 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 you know, the, the, the best available contender in the IBF ratings. That's what he's fighting. And you can't take it for granted. This fella's not here, as I say, to make up the numbers. Here come to fight. But you know what? He is, he is something special. His leads have got a special, special champion here. And years to come, they're going to... They're gonna, I know you appreciate him, but you're going to really appreciate him what he is. Because he can unify these titles if we can make the fights. But first of all, as he said himself, he can't take his eye off the ball. This guy's standing in front of him. And he's got to dispose of him. And he's got to do it in style. And that's what it's all about on Saturday. Let's see a very, very different outcome to that. Tell us how you're feeling with the big fight approaching, Sofia. Yeah, can you can speak French. You can speak English. Can you speak English? Can you speak English? Can you speak English? No, I don't know. Just not. So how, how do you feel coming up to the big fight? Tell us about your preparations and how you feel about fighting Josh Warrington. But I will affront Josh Warrington. I feel good. I'm, I'm good. Uh, okay. We practice a lot for this. With the best conditions that we had in hand. And I hope I can show up for a good match. I can do the best of me. How, um, how do you rate uh, Josh as a, as a boxer? Comment vous évaluez Joshua en tant que boxeur C'est un bon champion. Et ça compte en plus. I need to make a difference, I need to create an impact. In order to win. Can you hear this guys? Oh, no. Right, let's... let's can you get show? the microphone? Can move up. Talk to the one on the table, talk to that one. Talk to the one in your hand. Hold it to your mouth. Can you hear now? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Right, so what what would it mean to you to win the title? How would it change your life? Si vous gagnez cette bataille, comment ça va changer votre vie? It will change everything. I will create my own reputation, my own name in the box industry. My children will be proud of me. And my country, of course. Sofian, how do you beat Josh Warrington where all those in the past have failed? How do you beat him? Comment pensez-vous que vous pouvez battre Joshua alors que les autres combattants ils ont pas réussi à faire? I know it. You know it, but how? Vous savez, mais comment? Bollocks. I believe in myself. If I am on this way, it's because I'm ready to fight. And this is what I'm going to do. What about the, uh, what about the crowd? Josh as ever, that's going to give you a bit of an advantage, isn't it? It's always a boost. Um, Got to be serious now, aren't we? Man, a few words to Sofian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's ready. He's ready, yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not too confident with his French. I mean, he's meant to be French. It's almost as good as mine. Jim and Paul Josh are beta leads. <laughs> I gotta see with that. Um, Listen, I think uh, not, not only the last, uh, the last fight being a motivation, I think we're dwelling a little bit too much on that, but I realise that the things what he said there, he can be an hero, he can go back home, a hero, you know. He's turned his career around instantly by, uh, by beating me. So I can't let that happen. And I can understand as, uh, as a world champion, how fighters can overlook other fighters, our fighters can get complacent, you know, our fighters can just go through the motion through camp. But I don't let that happen. I don't let that happen for a number of reasons. First of all, I know that he would have been given absolutely everything in the last 11 weeks, 12 weeks, to put him in the best opportunity to try and win this title. Secondly, we're on a mission. You know, we, we have talked about unifications, and although I said I'm not letting that be a distraction, for me to carry on going, to keep on climbing the rankings, I've got to win. Boxing's a, a crazy game of, of, of snakes and ladders with very, very few ladders and many, many snakes. And you roll your dice, you win, you lose. You win, you take another step forward, and ultimately you march towards titles, world titles, unification fights, but you lose, you take a backward step, and then you could have a slippery slope down that snake and it could take you years to get back. And I am prepared to do that at this moment in time. I've worked far too hard, sacrificed far too much to stop right now. Let's have it right. If you take away 2018, people will have said this is a 50-50 fight for me. Just because of the way I came through winning the world title against Selby and Frampton, all of a sudden it's a walkover. But my mentality won't let it be that I'm just walking in there and it's an instant win because I've no and I've experienced enough, there's a man in the opposite corner, he's got two arms, and he's going to try and hurt me. And I've got to keep hold of that title by training hard, sacrifice, and turning up on the night. And uh, not only do I want to just win, I mean, first and foremost, winning is the most important, getting that W, but if I'm sending a message out to the rest of the division, and to make myself as a solid world champion, then I beat him in style. Thank you very much, Josh. Well, uh, final words, Frank. Um, I mean, listening to Josh and uh, hearing him speaking to his public, he's still very much uh, the man of the people, isn't he? I mean, he leads through and through, and, uh, and, and he has an ability to connect with the public, and that makes him special, or one of the things that makes him very special. That's right, it's because he's not left his roots, his feet are on the floor, and he's not become big-headed about anything, as I've seen happen with so many champions. He's a man of the people, he's a great guy to be around and most, most importantly, he's a great boxer. He's a great fighter and he can go on to be one of the best fighters of his generation. We'll uh, do photographs for you head-to-heads uh, once we've cleared the table and anybody who wants uh, interviews as well, all the guys will be available for that. But uh, in the meantime, are there any questions uh, from the floor for the lads who are here? Any questions? If so, fire them up. Yeah, I've got one down there. Yeah. Uh, it's mainly to, uh, to Frank Warren. If this fight goes according to plan and um, Josh wins, we're always on about these options, but nobody seems to want to fight him, is it? Well, as we just said, the two of them just went up in weight, didn't they? They went on to do it, but somebody replaced them. Or, who knows, if Josh comes through his fights, we hope he will, maybe he moves up. We've got, we'll make them happen. They will happen, these fights. It's up to us to make them happen. He's got to get up past the fight first. There we go. These two compete Saturday night at the First Direct Arena in a scheduled 12-round contest, and it will be for the vacant Commonwealth Light Heavyweight Championship. I knew, Lyndon. Bad, do you? It's not too bad. It's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
These two competing this Saturday night at the First Direct Arena live on BT Sport and ESPN Plus in a scheduled 12-round contest for the Commonwealth Super Featherweight Championship. Oh, good boys. This our main event Saturday night at the First Direct Arena, live on BT Sport and in the United States on ESPN Plus. This a scheduled 12 round contest for the IBF featherweight championship of the world. Just running, set. Just running, set. Just running, set. <laughs> Go on, Tommy. Cheerleader. Love you. Please, 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 please. Give me something this way. Come on, then. 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 Come on, then.